what's up guys my name is Julie and this is the curated curvy thank you so much for tuning in today I have for you all a another episode of what I made recently I am not a fan of long intros so let's get into the clothes we have this sweater so if you saw my plans for what I wanted to sew this winter this sweater was definitely on it can't remember the number off the top of my head but I'll pop it up on the screen for you so that you can see unfortunately this is an out of print pattern but as I mentioned before I know that if you do some digging on eBay and sometimes even Amazon you can come across one it is well worth it it comes in sizes I believe extra small to extra extra large I sewed an extra large initially I thought that a size large was my size but I was very mistaken. I prefer the sweaters to fit like much more oversized and baggy. I'm usually wearing like some sort of t-shirt underneath so it's just easier to layer when it is a little bit more oversized so I went ahead and I sewed it. There's not much to this pattern it's literally just your front piece your back piece your sleeve piece and your neck band piece so it comes together really quickly. I sew everything on the serger and then I hem it on my sewing machine so it all goes also very smoothly. Now one of the mistakes that I made or not the mistakes but one of the things that I want to finish or fix is actually there are two things so the sweater the sewing went fine I love it I wear it I have worn it quite a few times at this point already but when I cut out the neck I was really low on fabric because I made a mistake and I have a video of me like not really making this but just the process of making it which I'll have up on my channel either before this or after that so stay tuned for all of the deal details for that but I made a mistake so I had to recut the pattern and do it again and when I recut it and did um and went to sew it again I was a little bit low on fabric and so I cut the neck on the cross grain not the straight grain so when you have a cut of fabric you have um well I think it's like three grain lines so you have your straighter grain your cross grain and then you have like the bias which is diagonal you're supposed to cut things on the straight of grain I know this especially things that need to like move or give in a certain way and yeah I cut my neck band on the cross grain so there's absolutely like no movement in it so I have to like really like wrangle it over my head which is not exciting but it's definitely doable I do have the version of this sweater which I actually messed up so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna recut the neckband using like that sweater and then like reattach it just so that it has a little bit more give around the neck but in the meantime I've been wearing it and it's not that much of an issue. The second thing is I didn't take up the proper amount of seam allowance on the sleeve so because the sleeve is already loose it kind of does this when I'm wearing it sometimes which is fine. The problem is and I don't know if the camera will catch it but when it flips over it just looks kind of like not so neat on the inside so I want to go back and I want to fix that and all I'm going to do is literally just fold it in one more time and then sew that as the hem that way when it flips over or when you see that like exposed inside it doesn't look all kind of like tattered like it does right now but those are both like user errors and not an error of the pattern and those are also very easy fixes apart from that I really do love this sweater I have another one in the same fabric this is a chenille from Hobby Lobby that they do not have in stock anymore but I have one in gold that I made about this time last year and that sweater is like my tried and true so I definitely knew that I needed another one in my wardrobe and I made it and I'm glad I did because like I said it's relieving that sweater of like constantly being in rotation I love the pink I love the fit this is just something that I knew I would like and I would get a lot of wear of so Here's another version. That is the first thing I made. I don't know what, I think this is actually the only thing that I've made this year so far. Um, yeah, which is kind of wild, but I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. Let's get into make number two. Now everything else I have to show you, I actually made last year, like in the month of December, but I never got around to doing like a December makes video, even though we are now in February. Um, and it kind of is what it is. So I'm gonna show you all the things that I made then. The next thing that I want to show you is the same fabric. It is this duster coat here. I think this pattern may also be out of print, 
but if not I will link it down below regardless of anything as you know it's always going to be on the screen for you so just go ahead and screenshot take a picture write it down this is the pattern so I have been wanting a long duster for quite some time and I just never had enough fabric to give me like the length and the kind of like the drama that I wanted from it so this is the pattern that I did now a few things to know is that I did change quite a few things on the pattern not quite a few but enough to where this doesn't really look like what the pattern was going for so the first thing that I did was how I finished the neck so it's really interesting how you piece it together and it's kind of hard to like explain it comes together very easily now the neck is supposed to kind of be like folded in and then like you stitch it down but I didn't want that visible stitching going down it and also I liked kind of having like this like I'm not like gathered but like all of the fabric like this drapey effect up here on the neck so I went ahead and I just folded it over a little bit and then I finished it with a piece of self-made bias tape and it goes all the way around the side and then down the bottom across the neck and down the other side the pattern does not call for this this is just how I wanted to finish it another thing that I did was I changed the sleeves so the sleeves are just like a regular straight sleeve full length I think they come about to your wrist but it's a little bit more of a narrow sleeve so it's a bit more fitted I'm not really a fan of that especially in like things that I'm going to be layering over things because usually I'm wearing like a fuller shirt underneath so I went ahead and I chopped off about four inches from the sleeve so that I would have room to attach a cuff and I cut out a cuff um, and then I also slashed and spread the bottom of the sleeve so that I would have some volume down there so it gives me a bit of a puffy sleeve and it fits like to perfection it is my vibe and every time I wear it like I'm absolutely in love with the way that it looks the last thing that I did was I lengthened it quite a bit so this pattern is a pattern that falls right at I think the longest le length is about hip length and I could be mistaken on that I'm pretty sure that's the case um I'll put the line drawings up just to refresh both of our memory whatever the case may be it wasn't as long as I wanted it to be so what I did was basically just cut it at some point in the pattern and then I think I added about six to eight inches in between again I'll put that exact number on the screen for you and that gave me like a really nice like full length duster coat um length and so I am very ecstatic with this all in all I really do like this this is one of those things where I feel tempted to say oh I'll probably make another one but knowing me I probably won't and it's not because of the pattern it's just I'm very happy with the one that I have I get a lot of wear out of it and I just don't see a need for another one in my wardrobe I'm really satisfied with this make all right next I just have this really simple mock neck tee in this really cool print from Joann's this is like it looks like a ribbed knit and that it has ripping through it and I don't know if the screen will pick up on it or not but it looks like it has ribbing through it however it's a very loose knit if that makes sense like a lot of the knits that I use are either like rib knits which have like a lot of almost like compression not like they're squeezing you but you know they kind of like have a good snap back or like a brush poly which also is like very fitted very stretchy this one is like the elastic content just feels like it's a little bit less which I didn't peep at the time but it's cute the pattern is my tried and true shirt pattern which I will put on the screen for you I'm horrible at these pattern names and um yeah I'm just not good at them but the pattern is my tried and true mock neck pattern I think with this one I extended the neckline up a little bit just to give it more of a turtleneck not too crazy over that I do like prefer a lower neck kind of like a mock neck and not anything close to a true turtleneck but that's okay not the end of the world it's a really simple pattern I made it because I made the Sally slip dress by Thrills and Stitches which I will show you next and I made it for my birthday which was December 3rd so at that time it wasn't warm enough to just wear like a slip dress and I couldn't find like the proper like coat to go over it so I figured I would layer it with a shirt underneath so let me show you the slip dress this is the Sally slip dress and oh my gosh this is probably one of the most beautiful fabrics I have ever worked with so it's this gorgeous ombre fabric it is a charmeuse jacquard and so it has imprinted on it like this really subtle wave pattern and then it goes from this cream color all the way to like this fiery orange on the bottom and it is just so gorgeous this is the Sally slip dress by thrills and stitches and it is a 
really really easy pattern so when I saw the pattern for sale I usually will like buy her patterns immediately because one you support the people and two like she is a great designer um Elisa of Thrills and Stitches so as soon as the pattern was released I went ahead and I grabbed it and I knew that I had been wanting a slip dress. I knew I had this fabric and I wanted it to be a slip dress, but I was really scared of like ruining this exceptionally beautiful fabric. I took the plunge and I am very glad I did. The dress in terms of construction is not perfect. There are some things that as a seamstress I need to work on and tweak, but it is again no fault of the design. It is just user error for one. I couldn't get the V on the front correct so as you see there's a little dip in between whereas the way she creates the pattern these two pieces kind of touch like that I couldn't quite figure that out but this still in my opinion looks nice and it's the same on the back the back also has a lower back which I think is just beautiful again this dress is really really simple like if you want like a really quick satisfying make that's going to give you a bit more of a wow factor I would definitely go with this dress the next thing that I regret doing is the lining so I had this really light cotton voile in my stash and I figured it's light enough to pair with this which it is the problem is that it doesn't have the same amount of like drape so you know your cottons are a bit stiffer whereas like your charmeuse they're a bit more weighty and they fall they're heavy Heavier. so I feel like the lining causes like me to I don't know it just feels weird on my body it feels like I can tell that there's two different weights of fabric in the dress and I'm not a fan of that now no way I'm not going to take out the lining because that's insane but going forward it's just something that I've noted to myself that if I'm going to use like a silky drapey fabric then to make sure that the lining is like within that same family. The dress also has ties so that you can give a good cinch and waist if you want, which, you know, love a good cinch waist, so I love that feature. And this was my birthday dress. This was my 34th birthday dress, and I'm very happy with it. And like I said, I paired it because my birthday is in the colder months with this shirt underneath, and I think it was just like such a fun look. Like it was a little bit like you know sultry a little bit quirky which is like a thousand percent my vibe the next thing i have to show you is a self-drafted pattern this is my juliet vest i self-drafted this as i already said i love the idea of vests and layering but the issue that i run into consistently is that I don't like long line vests, if that makes sense. So I prefer everything to sit at my waist. My waist naturally sits higher than most people's waist because I am curvy. And so I just, I want to accentuate that area to each their own. But for me, that is an area that I like to be accentuated. Now, most vests, like I said, are kind of like long lines and they just don't work with the way that I like to dress and the things that I like to wear. So I went about designing my own vest. I took my bodice block and I tweaked and tweaked and tweaked until I got something that I liked. And I really, really love this vest. Now this version is unlined. I plan on making another version soon that is lined. We'll see it when it gets here <laughs> for this version. This version is unlined. This quilting cotton I got from Hobby Lobby and I absolutely love the color. Hobby Lobby also had this fabric here, which is like literally the same color scheme. You wouldn't be able to tell, but it has like flowers on it, but it's like the perfect like cream tone to match the vest. So that was really cool. Everything is finished with bias binding. It's not reversible because I do have a back seam in this. So one of the things that I've noticed in patterns is I usually have to pinch out a little bit of fabric on like my upper back area and that could just mean that I think my shoulders are like tilted a bit more forward than most people's which is absolutely fine so one of the things that I've started doing is taking like a curved back seam in my patterns and you can't tell because your girl did that look at that good sewing but taking a curved seam in the back pattern so this actually does have a back seam and then it has like your size seams and everything on the inside as I aforementioned is finished with bias binding but it still looks really clean and really beautiful you have your cute little three ties on the front and yeah I love it I like that also the front neckline kind of like swoops in like that it doesn't sit too high but it sits like just a bit low enough for me especially in the colder months and then the back is also kind of swoops so it's also not like sitting high up on your neck 
It works for me because I like things with like a fuller sleeve, especially in the colder months. And so I've had a lot of fun wearing this and styling it. Right now, my favorite thing to style it over is one of the Nomi patterns by Butte Shador, which is this beauty. So this is the Nomi pattern by Butte Shador. I have actually made this pattern once before and I've shared it on this channel already. So this is my second version. In this version, similar to the first version, I do not use the sleeves that came with the Nomi pattern. Pattern. This is a sleeve I stole off of a simplicity pattern and I really love just how full and big this sleeve actually is. I also like that it's just finished with a simple elastic cuff on the bottom. I think that is the only thing that I changed about this pattern. With this pattern I have already in like the pattern pieces dropped the neckline just a tiny bit because the neckline on the original pattern sits too high for me but apart from that everything else is perfect. One of the cool things that I did was I went ahead and I added pattern piping on some of the seams. So as you can see, this pattern has really interesting seaming across the skirt. And it's one of those things that I feel like gets lost in the skirt because it's so much skirt. And it's also one of those things that I also really want to highlight because I feel like one, it takes a lot of effort to get it right. And two, it's a feature of the dress that I really like. So I had this lead, like faux leather binding in my stash. And it'd been in there for a while. I couldn't figure out what to do with it. And ultimately, I decided that I would use it to highlight those scenes. And it is a choice that I a thousand percent do not regret. The only thing, the only thing that I regret is by the time I decided to add it, I had already constructed the skirt and I wish I would have added some along these pockets to highlight also the really cool seaming of the pockets. But that's not like a, oh my gosh, you know, that's not like a massive regret. It's just something that I wish I would have done differently. With this pattern, for once in my whole life, I decided <laughs> to follow the instructions like to the T and oh sorry I shook my camera I decided to follow the instructions to the T and finish the inside by hand sewing it so I went ahead if you can see I don't know if it'll catch it but I tacked down the zipper by hand or like the lining to the zipper by hand. I also did the same down here and did that by hand and then I was tired of tacking things down by hand so I searched the armhole. <laughs> It is definitely, when I look at it, it makes me happy. I think it looks really pretty. I am not, I've always said I'm not someone who cares very much about like having the inside of my garment be as beautiful as the outside of my garment. I want something that is well finished, don't get me wrong, but usually that can be achieved on my serger. But I wanted to try it out, you know, be like those girlies who like the cute insides. And it's way more work than I think I want to put in. <laughs> For a garment, like the amount of time it took me to hand sew like the lining to the skirt and then to the zipper, I could have finished the dress like two times over. So going forward, it's definitely not for me. I also feel like it causes um how I did it, not the instructions, causes the lining to kind of like pucker a bit here. And so it just doesn't look as like smooth and flat as I would like it to. Whereas usually if I were to finish it with a serger, what I would have done was just like once um the neckline was finished, I would have laid that out and just attached it on I would have laid that piece out and then surged along that bottom edge. So then it kind of would be like one piece of fabric not two pieces of fabric being joined together with the skirt if that makes sense but i like it i think it's really cool that you cannot see the seam here like where the skirt meets because the lining and the top like cover that seam so nicely i think that is really beautiful but it's definitely not something i do again because <laughs> i feel like it took too much time I cannot say enough. I love this dress. I love this pattern. It is another one that looks like you're putting in like a lot of work and a lot of effort, but it's a really, really easy pattern to sew and it comes together relatively quickly. Like it does not take as long. This, the bottom skirt piece is massive. So much fabric, so much gathering, so much fabric and so much gathering, but well worth it. I honestly feel like if I'm being honest, I could add more fabric to one of the panels in the bottom of the skirt, just because the gathering on the bottom of the skirt is not as dense as the gathering on the upper portion of the skirt. 
but I don't think I'd do that because I feel like it's still it's a lot of gathering. Also have to be careful with this pattern and make sure that when you are gathering it, if you ever choose to sew it, that you pay attention to the notches because the notches do dictate which portion of the skirt needs to be gathered into which portion of that upper skirt. And that matters a lot because you could get into a point where you've put all of your gathering in one area and then the rest of the areas are barely gathered. So the last three dresses that I want to show you are all, I want to say it's called 83 40 but I could be wrong on that anyways whatever the pattern number is this pattern has me in a chokehold like I probably have not exaggerating six versions of this dress to date if you saw my last video where I talk about the pattern I go over the modifications that I made to the pattern to get it to fit me like my dream knit dress and it fits me like a dream and because it fits me like a dream I just keep making it it is really quick to make I actually have one cut out <laughs> to be sewn on my cutting table right now and so that will be seven versions of this dress I can say with confidence that I am wearing all of the dresses and I am enjoying it I am thoroughly enjoying them they're really easy to put on they're really easy to sew when I was making these I was kind of in the thick of like my former teaching job and so I just wanted to come in here and do something that was like satisfying but had like a really high reward and this dress was that because I can sew it up literally in an evening and be ready to wear it the next day at this point I have kind of pumped the brakes on making any more of these for the remainder of the winter season because I want to make sure that the ones that I have in my wardrobe that I already really enjoy I am wearing and that's not going to be possible if I keep making them at the rate in which I've been making them. All of that to say let's get into the dresses. Okay so the first one I have is in this gorgeous black velvet knit. It has like this silver I mean you can see it it has like this silver like striping through it that's kind of very this fabric was actually a gift from my husband maybe like two years ago at this point. Um, he got it from a fabric shop in Miami, Florida. And it's just been sitting in my stash because I didn't know what to do with it. I think when he bought it, he only bought like one and a half yards, which <laughs> love him, bless him. But that's not enough to do just about anything with for me and so it sat in the stash maybe he bought exactly two it was like one and a half to two yards but it just sat in my stash for a while because I really couldn't figure out like what to do with it then I was thinking when Christmas was rolling around again I was in the thick of working and I did not have time to like put the effort into like a fancy frilly Christmas dress that I wanted to make and this fabric screams like festive to me so I figured this would be the perfect fabric and the dress was the perfect pattern it actually worked out that I almost ran out of fabric which is why I think it was only like one and a half because I know I can get the stress out of two so the back of it I don't know if you can see but that stripe down the middle is like the selvage edge being caught in there and it actually could be like a little bit see-through but when I wore it and I tried it on I couldn't really tell so it actually is it's okay it worked out the sleeves were also not cut on grain so the sleeves were cut on the cross grain again which we've talked about can yield not so favorable results <laughs> but I didn't have a choice when I was making this dress if I wanted to get all of the pattern pieces out of it and I was almost positive that these sleeves are going to be too tight but they're not they fit perfectly which is a Christmas miracle thank you Jesus so I'm very happy about that got the neckline out of it and yeah there's not much to this dress it's a really simple dress but again it's really satisfying like I said I talked over the modifications in a former video but just to kind of reiterate I think I went ahead I lengthened the sleeve I nipped in the waist I added a seam down the back so that I could do that curved um seam which I talked about just a few seconds ago so that it fits across my neckline better and then I think I also took a smidge of fabric out of this portion of the pattern just by like slap um just by cutting like a line through and then like overlapping those pieces by maybe like a half an inch just so that it fits nicely on like the upper portion of my back and it's just a perfect dress it is an absolutely perfect dress and it's so satisfying to make and I love it so this was the dress that I wore for um Christmas service for church this year and I have worn I haven't worn it since actually the only reason I haven't worn it since though I was actually going to wear it today when I went to church but I was like oh, let's actually start like pulling out other things that we're not wearing as often I'm trying to like put in rotation some dresses in my closet that have just been kind of like sitting dormant because I reach for things like this so often 
but I guarantee you I'm gonna wear this again sometime soon because I absolutely love it. The next 8348 is this one. This is in a ribbed knit from Joann's. I love this one. Out of all of the ones that I made, I think I wear this one the most just because right now when it's so cold, this is a much heavier knit. And so it tends to keep me warmer than some of the other dresses and I don't have to do much layering to it. So this one, this one gets pulled out a lot. The fabric is getting the tiniest bit fuzzy, but not to the point where it's like throwing me off or bothering me. I think I forgot to mention with this one that I did not hem this dress and I haven't washed it yet. So we'll see how it holds up in the wash if I need to go back and hem it. But as of right now, all of the edges are just cut. I mean, we know that like, knit doesn't fray like that so i'm hoping that it doesn't fray i think the only reason i didn't knit um hem it was because of time crunch like i maybe sewed this on a saturday and church was sunday but like i said we'll see how it holds up and if i need to go back and hem it if i don't then i just won't and i'll leave it as is and this one i did hem so i did the triple zigzag stitch is it picking it up i did the triple zigzag stitch on the hem for this one on the top and then the same on the bottom and there's not much to it. I love it. It's the same modifications as all the other dresses. But like I said, this is the one that I wear the most. I also like how heavy this fabric is because I feel like it just drapes nicer. Like it pulls down and it doesn't cling. We don't like clingy dresses around here. <laughs> so I like that this one like pulls down and doesn't cling. And that may be another reason that I tend to reach for it more. But yeah that's this guy. Okay the third one that I made is this. And this is a brush knit from Joann's. And it is in this gorgeous gorgeous floral print um this one is a little bit clingy but i actually have still worn it a lot i like layering this one too like i have the i want to say it's like the aura pinafore from soft and studio and this goes per cool so the last thing that i made is this bag this bag is by taika studio i don't think their bags have names i think they have numbers so whatever the case may be i will put it up on the screen for you but it's this cute little crossbody bag and absolutely love it i did it out of a, a 12 fabric that i bought quite some time ago for a home decor project that didn't work out so i was left with a little bit of this fabric just lounging around and it's so beautiful and i couldn't figure out what i wanted to do with it for the longest and when i figured that i wanted to make a bag this was the perfect one i'm gonna stand up <laughs> so that i can show you some of the details of the bag so first and foremost there is oh first and foremost i actually quilted the fabric myself so all of the outer is quilted and while that sounded like a good idea initially it really wasn't my, the best idea <laughs> that i've ever had because it made the fabric really thick so if you can see like the binding right here like the binding is almost the width of my finger like it's a thick thick so getting this through the machine towards the end was quite the feat i actually had to like hand crank my machine like I couldn't use my foot pedal I was like turning the pedal to keep going through I got it through and I was able to do the whole thing on the sewing machine which is quite amazing but I definitely won't be quilting the fabric for the next one maybe I will who knows so the details of the pattern um it has this back pocket here which is actually really cool this was another mistake that I made when I um sewed it was that the way that you cut this out one of these pieces ends up unlined and because when i quilted the fabric i didn't like double like side it so i ended up having to go back and like just put pieces of fabric but i mean oops sorry you can't even tell like i just attached it on that seam line and so fits nicely so this is a nice roomy pocket back here then when you open it up it has a zipper pocket right here and goes inside of there and then it has this pocket here which is the main body pocket it has some pleats on this side so that you can like fill it up and then it'll expand or it can contract and then it's closed with a whatever you call this thing here and then it has your strap here the only thing that i would change about this going forward is i feel like it needs the clasp here it needs another one like here just so that you can kind of like snap it on and snap it off but that's me being really really nitpicky this thing i adore and i actually wear a lot it's really easy to wear just kind of like throw it across and i feel like it just adds something fun to my outfits but it's also i keep kicking my camera sorry but it's also like incredibly practical so i am very very happy with this i have been eyeing the taika studio patterns for a while and just never took the plunge in sewing one but having sewn this i have already bought another one which i'll put there for here for you it's kind of like it gives me duffel bag vibes but like a mini duffel bag i don't know 
exactly why I bought this one because I don't carry large purses. I usually don't have that much stuff to put in my purse. Like I am very much like a foam keys Vaseline for my lips and hand sanitizer person. Like those are the only things that are usually in my purse. So I don't know, but I like the design of this one and I thought it would be interesting to make it. and I will probably quilt another fabric because I'm really feeling like the quilted bag vibe lately. But this is the last thing that I made recently. <laughs> All right, and that is all for my recent makes. Thanks so much for tuning in, staying till the end of the video. Until next time, stay beautiful, make great things. I'll talk to you later. Bye.